Premium quality football shirts at an extremely affordable price. Sound good? If so, check out the sponsor of today's video, jerseyfifa.com. You can see that I've sent these some shirts and they really are top quality. So make sure to click the link in the description to go find a shirt for yourself or perhaps as a gift for someone else. And you can now use code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. That's code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. I really do recommend their products, so go take a look. Now let's get into the analysis. Week by week, the issues at Manchester United are becoming more and more apparent with struggles and difficulties in the team almost every single week. And this isn't anything new, it has largely been happening for the last 9 seasons. And for the fans, it's made even worse by the fact that their noisy neighbours Manchester City are just so good at the moment, having a lot of success in the league almost every year, whilst also going deep in the Champions League on a regular basis. But when we look at things from the outside, it just doesn't make sense. Manchester United have spent nearly £100 million more than Manchester City over the past decade, but that doesn't transfer over onto the pitch. If we look at the two squads, Manchester City's team is simply several levels clear of the Manchester United squad, and again that's been the case for several years now, but how is this happening when they're spending the same amount? Are United signing the wrong players? Well, let's try and break this down. Personally, I like to break the traits of a player down into four main categories, which are the mental side of a player, the physical side, tactical side and the technical side. But why am I telling you this? Well, whilst these are the four aspects that I look for in a player, it can be hard to find a player that excels in all four areas, so often you have to pick two traits to really prioritise, and what you prioritise really depends on the club. Now if we start by focusing on Manchester United, the frequent change of managers over the past decade certainly hasn't helped them to really develop an identity or club philosophy, which has contributed to the lack of success on the football pitch. Now if we take a look at Manchester City, they have a far more established mindset and philosophy, and when it comes to prioritising two main traits in a player, it's pretty clear that they prefer players with tactical and technical traits. As for Manchester United, I've already said that their approach is a bit more mixed, but if I was to categorise most of their recent first team players into two categories, it would have to be the mental and physical attributes. So, to back this up, I want to take a look at some of Manchester United's recent transfer windows and we'll start in 2018, where Fred and Dallow were brought into the club, and despite his recent form, it's clear that Fred isn't a particularly technically gifted player. The same can also be said for the players signed in 2019 as well, and I'm pretty confident that pretty much everyone will agree that all of these players are better physically than what they are tactically, and we can start to see a pattern emerging here. Now, the 2020 transfer was a slight move away from this pattern with some more technically gifted players being brought into the club. But if you really think about it, how many of these have succeeded? Certainly not very many of them. But back to those other signings that I was talking about earlier, and I want to focus on the signings of Daniel James, Fred and Wambasaka, and then compare them to a few players that Man City signed in the same position. So the three Manchester City players that we'll be looking at are Mares, Rodri and Cancelo, because they play the same position as those three United players that I mentioned, and they were all signed at a pretty similar time. I think we can already see that Pep Guardiola and Manchester City have developed quite a clear philosophy of the type of players that they're trying to sign. They're clearly scouting a certain type of profile of player for the club to then bring in. Whereas if we look at the recently departed Manchester United scouts, the trend is very different and the types of players that are scouting and signing are completely different, but is there necessarily a right type of player that a football club should be looking to sign? Well the obvious argument would be that Manchester City are buying the better type of players, leading to more success on the pitch, but let's compare some of these signings starting with the signings of Cancelo and Aaron Wambasaka. So first of all we'll take a look at Wambasaka and what some of his strengths are as a player and straight away we can see that he really excels in the physical department, having excellent pace and acceleration off the mark. On top of this, he also has pretty clear physical strength and power, allowing him often to go into a 1 vs 1 situation up against the opposition, before easing them out of the way, using his size and physique to his clear advantage. And then finally, the brilliant, clear, blatant strength of Aaron Wambasaka is his tackling ability. And to an extent this is a slightly technical trait, but it also largely a physical trait as well, and also the mental trait I was talking about earlier. So we've seen Wambasaka excelling physically, but now time to look at the player that Manchester City signed for the same position to see what the differences are. And instantly, Cancelo is levels clear when it comes to passing the football. The same can also be said for Cancelo when it comes to dribbling as well, and he's up there as arguably the best fullback in world football when it comes to dribbling with the ball in tight spaces to carry the ball forward for his side. 
Lastly, having put the work in to get into the final third, Cancelo is right up there with Alexander-Arnold as the very best creative fullback in the world, and his delivery in around the final third truly is of the absolute highest level. So to summarise, Wan-Bissaka may be a better physical player, but Cancelo is clearly the far better footballer when it comes to playing with the ball at his feet, particularly in tight spaces, so the better signing was made by Manchester City. Now time to move on to the next comparison, and I'm aware that Fred and Rodri don't play the exact same position, but they both play in central areas in the midfield, and they were also signed for very similar fees, so let's get comparing. So, one of Fred's greatest attributes is his ridiculous energy levels. He's an extremely tenacious midfielder that does a great job of getting up and down the pitch, which of course are a physical trait, whilst also it highlights his mentality. But, unfortunately for Fred, that is sort of where his real strengths end. His engine in the midfield can't be doubted, but when it comes to passing the ball to really help his team dictate the play, he really isn't the right man for the job. Now if we look at Manchester City's Rodri, we are going to see a completely different type of player, with Rodri really bringing an element of calm to the Manchester City midfield in what we know is an extremely hectic Premier League. As well as bringing an element of calmness to the side, Rodri of course brings a lot of quality to the side as well. And he of course really excels when it comes to his passing ability, which really helps this Manchester City side to dominate the ball and most matches. And again, even just this brief look, we can see that whilst Fred has had a brilliant season, he lacks the technical ability to really control a game, whereas Rodri on the other hand has the ability to control an entire game with his passing ability. Now time for the last comparison, and to be honest, this one isn't going to take much explanation, as the strengths and weaknesses are pretty clear. But regardless, I do want to take a quick look, just to really highlight the difference. So first up is Dan James, and the first thing that comes to mind when we think about him is his electric pace, and rightly so, because he's arguably one of the quickest players currently playing in the Premier League. He is absolutely rapid. However, whilst his speed is extremely threatening, Dan James does struggle in other areas with things like his basic control, dribbling ability and simple passing, and they're all really below the level that is required at a modern day top club. Now if we look at the man that Manchester City signed just one year earlier, we can once again see a completely different style of player, and whilst James's control can be poor, Mahrez's cannot be questioned, and he's up there with the very best. Having shown this incredible ability to get the ball under control, Mahrez is also excellent at dribbling, and unlike a player like James, he doesn't rely on pace at all, and instead uses his close control and skill to beat his man. And then, having worked a bit of space for himself in the final third, Mahrez has excellent end product in the final third of the pitch, always racking up numerous assists for his teammates, whilst of course having the ability to cut in and shoot. So again, we can see that whilst being on the market at a pretty similar time, Manchester City chose to sign the far more technically gifted player, rather than going for the physical attributes of James, and it really just sums it all up. So, with Manchester City signing the far more technically gifted player in all three scenarios, you'd assume that they had to spend a lot more money to bring them in. But it's not the case, with Cancelo costing just £9 million more than what Aaron Wan-Bissaka did, whilst Rodri only cost a reported £4 million more than Fred. So with that in mind, Manchester United could have signed the players that Manchester City did, however they simply don't have the identity and philosophy in place to do that. Now, as I said, United's process hasn't been helped by the regular change of manager. However, again, that comes down to those higher up at the club, because if United had an identity, they would be bringing in managers with a similar mindset. Instead, we've seen United chopping and changing between different styles, going from the possession-based style of Van Gaal, before then switching to the more defensive-minded Jose Mourinho, and it's led to a really jumbled-up squad. Meaning that when Manchester United do actually bring some of those technical players into the squad, they simply don't fit in, because they're operating on a completely different wavelength to the more physical-based players. And genuinely, I would argue that the reason that Sancho and Van de Beek have struggled at times since joining the club is because their brains and their technical ability are a few levels ahead of majority of their struggling teammates. So, with all of that being said, the big question is how can Manchester United change this? Well, the appointment of Eric Ten Hag is certainly a good start, because he will demand a certain type of player for him to really build his team around. However, a lot of changes must come higher up the club, and over the next few years, Manchester United really need to put the work in to finally develop a clear identity and a model of how the football club wants to progress both on and off the pitch. Now, some of this will also come down to the scouts as well, because once the club have identified how they wish to progress on the pitch, it's important that the scouts are able to identify the right type of player to really put these plans in place. To be fair, the scouts will be helped by the fact that Ralph Rangnick is at the club, and we all know that he has a brilliant record for identifying young talent and bringing them into the club, 
and I'm sure that United fans will be hoping for more of the same over the next few seasons. And if he's given the license to communicate and work alongside Eric Ten Hag, then this could be the time where Manchester United begin to develop a clear plan, strategy and philosophy for the future of the football club. The, but these changes will take time. As frustrating as it may be, it is time for Manchester United fans to be patient, because these changes won't come overnight and the club may have to take another step backwards before then finally moving forward. But one thing that is absolutely essential is that Manchester United give Eric Ten Hag the technical players that he wants to get his team moving in the right direction, because we've seen what he's capable of doing in his time at Ajax. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, Manchester United are starting to put the right personnel in place to get the club moving in the right direction. But as always, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.